Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. The calendar is about to turn from April to May, and planners are ready to roll. On this episode, we're going to look at some of the agronomic decisions growers need to make at planting and how some of those decisions you make over the next few weeks could impact the success of your soybean crop. To talk planting agronomy, today I am joined by Horace Bonner, soybean specialist for the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs. Hi, Horst. Hey, great to have you back on the Soybean School. Nice to see you, my friend. Hey, I want to start things off with a quick look back at 2023. Now, last year in Ontario, you know, we had a really good soybean crop with an average yield of about 53 bushels per acre. Now, a lot of that success depends on, you know, the growing season and getting those timely rains in August. But how important is it to make, you know, the right agronomic decision and management decisions um, at planting to set you up for that successful yield? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're setting ourselves up for success, and then the rest depends on the weather. But if you don't set yourself up for success, well, then you're, you're going to suffer some bushels. I mean, yeah. soybeans are a wonderful crop that way in terms of being quite adaptable and, and tolerant to different management practices, as we all know. But, hey, let's, let's start them off right, eh? Yeah, exactly. Now, you have um, a list of five agronomy issues you think r- growers really need to pay attention to at planting, and we've talked about them all individually over the years, and I want to pull them all together. Um, let's run through them. Um, first up is fertility, you know, pop-up, starters, broadcast versus bandit here, you know, you know, lots of things to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And so this time of year, we get those kind of questions, you know, is there a benefit to an in pop up should we be banding is broadcast okay and i think the the quickest way to try to get to the answer is that we have to first assess the soil test level for any given field right without that we don't have a whole lot to really um bring to the table because essentially 20 years of work has shown that the soil test is the best predictor of any kind of fertilizer, including in furrow, including banding. And so I'm less concerned about how you get the fertilizer down as opposed to what the right rate is. And that depends, of course, on your soil test. So we did some work here. If you look at this chart, this goes back a few years now where we tried in furrows. We have a, a liquid product there. Uh, 2018 is what we tried in that set of experiments, and then we tried 50 pounds of MAP in furrow, right? Generally, we don't like a lot of fertilizer in furrow for soybeans because, of course, there's a burn factor. And then we tried a two-by-two two band um, of about half crop removal and then broadcast. And you can see there, boy, those are some pretty decent numbers, three, four, four and a half bushels, no real difference between banding and broadcast. But all those numbers were pretty good. And that is the cool part. And, of course, here is the real learning, though. You look at the bottom of that chart, P at 11 and K at 92. So both the P and K for parts per million were on the lower side, right? And if you look at the next chart here where we did those exact same treatments, we had those same fertilizers put through the planter and or broadcast, and the soil test here was, you know, more of a more of an acceptable level. Right. And this is the soybean story. It falls apart, right? Really only nothing to maybe a bushel kind of thing. And then, of course, you know, we redid all that work um, with Dr. Dave Hooker and a couple of others were involved as well. And this next chart here sum- summarizes it beautifully in the sense that you can see that if your soil test is low by putting down some... Um, fertilizer in the spring. This was in a two-by-two two band, but again, it, earlier work showed it didn't really matter. Five bushel gain. So that's that's my point. There's a five five bushels there if your soil test is slipping, but on the other hand, if the soil test is good, you can see from the rest of that chart, we couldn't get them to do any any more by putting on extra fertilizer, right? right. So at the end of the day, are there some some nuances there? It depends on your row width. 
I do think a two by two band is is slightly better than broadcast, especially if, if your soil test is slipping a little bit. The most economic response I have seen in, in our work is about half of crop removal. So somewhere in that 20 uh, P and 35, 40 K of actual, um, actual pounds per acre. Okay. So there's the fertility story. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about residue management and, you know, um, all those corn stalks that, are, that we're, we're running into, you know, you say it's really important to get those stalks out of the row. Well, the beautiful thing about soybeans is that they do work very well in a no-till situation, right? I mean, that's how so much of South America is and, and a lot of North America, too. It really does work well. The problem is not so much that we get a tillage response when we when we start tilling it's the fact that we're dealing with the residue right and this picture here shows it so well so the, one of the reasons i think a lot of us get frustrated with no-till is not because of the fact that we're getting much from the tillage we're getting something from dealing with those corn stalks so the point of the story is this there's other ways to do it right you can strip till you, or you, you can push that residue out of the roll. That's the key thing. Push that residue out of the roll. Or, Bernard, if you can't do that at all, let's say you're in seven and a half inch rows and there's, you, there's, there's no row cleaner or anything you can do in that row spacing and you're um, going to no-till, fine. But then you really have to consider uh, keeping your seeding rate on the higher end mm -hmm. because we lose plants. And we also lose that early season fast growth with all that residue. And the other thing, we are still investigating hard, and there are instances where some nitrogen or ammonium sulfate can help in those situations. Like in, in the work that I've done, we're, we are getting on average now 2.9 bushels to 100 pounds of ammonium sulfate um, in a no-till situation. So it's not a big number, but it is a real number. Yeah. And a lot of that is just from that nitrogen tie-up problem that we have with corn stalks, right? Mm -hmm. So all that to say is residue is a problem, no question. But there are various ways to try and deal with it. And, uh, you know, as much as we kind of always want to talk no-till versus conventional, till, that's not really what this is about. This It's about a residue management, and that's why I like calling it that, not a tillage question. Next up, you have planting date. And, you know, you say the only reason, you know, to wait now is to make sure that that uh, soil is fit. Well, once you get into the end of April, early May, yeah, there should be no more discussion about whether is it is it too early to plant soybeans. It's absolutely not. I mean, it's, certainly that's one thing we've learned over the last 10 years as we've been doing all these planting date studies. Once you get to the last week of April in most of Ontario, uh, it's time to go as long as the ground is fit, right? Hmm. Now, you know, we probably do ourselves a disservice in some ways by, by showing – these kind of numbers, like this is from 2023, right? Ridgetown, Winchester, Alora, and we showed some pretty nice responses there, you know, seven, six, two bushels. But it's not like that every year. And here is what I mean when I say that we do ourselves a disservice. It doesn't always turn out that way. When you look at the big picture, soybeans do very well, even right into the third week of May. Yeah, you're starting to lose a little bit once you get past the 10th, 12th of May, but this, it's not big. It's not big. You're not losing a lot. The key is the ground has to be fit, and fit. you can lose a lot more from planning into wet conditions than you can from this planning date story. So, um, you know, we all know it. Patience is a virtue, and we all know as good farmers that you got to wait for the ground to be fit, but, boy, it – it can, it's a good reminder, eh? Like a lot of us are just, um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when the sun's out and it wants to rain every fourth day to not be out there. But be patient. It, in the long run, you're doing yourself a favor. That is for sure. So let's talk about planting depth. Um, you know, you maintain that the 1.5-inch depth really, you know, is the sweet spot. But, you know, I guess that really can change between now and June, right? Well, you know, essentially we were always told the story that if you plant late, you got to go a little deeper to get into moisture. 
if you're planting super early, maybe you should be a little deeper too because the soil is more consistent in terms of the temperature because the day temperature fluctuates so much. And so we tried that, right? April, May, June, and we've talked about this before. And at the end of the day, the yield was uh, pretty consistent at that 1.5 inch level. Now, of course, you know, yeah, you can go a little bit deeper, a little bit shallower, no problem in soybeans. And the beautiful thing about this is, of course, because the taproot shoots down, right, and those lateral roots establish later, there is no true uh, problem with any seeding depth as long as you get the plants per acre. That's my opinion. It's really about plant establishment and so that's the problem if you go too deep that little seed can't get out and then you start to lose a lot of uh, a lot of uh, plants per acre mm -hmm. so at this time of year Bernard and in Ontario because we you know almost always get the moisture one and a half inches and to be honest with you if it's a no-till situation um, one inch is often okay yeah. too and, and and the other thing is you know Clay soils, you can see from this chart, boy, when we went deep on clay soils, we lost 6.8 bushels per acre. Now, that's three and a half inches, way too deep. We generally say don't go more than two and a half, even if it's real dry. Like, that's a huge number, right? We went from 73 bushels to 66.7 bushels um, to go on super deep. So I personally am not, not one of these guys that say uh, – sock the soybeans in uh, especially especially uh, you know in the last couple of days mm -hmm. of april here keep them on the shallower end and uh, aim for an inch and a half and, and and that's just perfect yeah hey final topic and that is you know seeding rate you know we've heard a lot of discussion you know that lower rates are the way to go um when it comes to ontario what's your perspective well, and again, you know, I think in some ways uh, someone like me oversimplifies this and, and it can and can make it actually, um, you can do a disservice to, to growers by coming up with one number. And he, here's what I mean, you know. If you grow beans that are tall and lush and have lots of room to branch, let's say you're in 30-inch rows or even 15s, right, and, and you grow really tall beans, maybe it's manured or it's just a, a very nice soil type, boy, you can get away with a lot fewer plants per acre. Maybe as few as 120, 130,000, right? But on the other hand, if you're on clay and the beans are short or you're planting later, right, um, or, and it's seven and a half inch rows, boy, we have evidence that sometimes 230 is not enough, right? So it depends on the situation. But generally speaking, in Ontario, our number should be higher than what you're seeing in the States by a little bit. And it's a cli climate thing, unless you're really dealing with white mold or, you know, uh, you're on some very, very beautiful soil that can get 70 years. See, the, kind of the interesting thing about this is if you're in a field that can get 70, 80, 90 bushels, you need fewer plants, yeah. right? You, you, a lot fewer. Compared to a fellow like me that's happy with 50, uh, you need some more, right? Uh, you need some more plants. Right. Well, hey, uh, Horst, um, we'll look for uh, a little luck, a couple of weeks of good planting weather, and get the crop in the in the ground. Um, as always, some great insights. Uh, we always appreciate you making some time for Soybean School. Well, good luck to everybody, and uh, boy, we're looking forward to another great year in, in the soybean world, and uh, yeah, stay safe.